the home with them. Um, praise and worship announces. We got your chairs over there. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here tonight? Hallelujah. Welcome to the Miracle Crusade. And let's just stir ourselves up. So let's stand and just lift your hands to heaven and give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship and glorify you in this place. We praise your mighty name, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Expecting in this place. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Yes, we praise you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. to worship him and glorify him. Oh, Lord, we praise you in this place. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. All the glory, all the praise. Oh, Lord, 
we praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, oh Lord, oh Lord we praise your name.
tonight. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you and glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift your hands, Father. We praise you. And we do glorify you. Said that Abraham grew strong in faith, giving glory unto God. We've come to give you glory and praise and honor. We magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you, Lord. We praise your name. is present in your heart, you have to do something with it. You can't sit on it. You got to rejoice in it. Release it. Faith grows as you do something with it. Amen. Tonight we've come to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, but it is grown and developed and strengthened as we release it through rejoicing and praising and but we've come to do. We've come to participate. We've come to rejoice in what God has already made ours. Amen. Turn to somebody before you're seated tonight and say, glory be to God. He's my healer. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. We want to first welcome everyone who's joined us by live stream. We are grateful that you would tune in. You're watching. Uh, we ask that you also be watching in faith, not spectating, uh, not sitting by passively watching. But I tell you what, the power of God is flowing right where you're at. Amen. If you will release your faith in that power, God has a miracle for you. Amen. We want to invite you to turn off, uh, silence your cell phones and electronic devices. And uh, we have services that are going to uh, be tonight through, obviously, tomorrow uh, through Thursday, 10 a.m., 7 p.m. The doors open one hour. The front doors will open an hour before each service. And then I believe these sanctuary doors, it's 30 minutes before. Uh, we want to remind everyone, of course, if you're from this church, uh, you know that Thursday night is double up offering night and then we will also have ministry to the sick on thursday night uh now if you're familiar with our miracle crusades uh number one we do receive an offering every night number two most every night there is some kind of ministry to the sick by the leading of the holy ghost so come expecting even in the morning services uh please do not wait uh till thursday night every night that's why we come every night in faith releasing our faith actively participating in the service because miracle power is flowing every single service, not just Thursday night. So we come expectant that every service, that miracle power is flowing. It's in manifestation and it is for me. It is for you. Amen. 
Um, so we have, again, double up is where you, whatever you were going to bring Thursday night, you double that and you come onto the service uh, ready to give. And then if we um, can ask that during this conference, during this Miracle Crusade, if you have a testimony throughout this service or maybe from a previous uh, Miracle Crusade since we've last been here and you have not given us the testimony. I won't take time to go through the uh, biblical references of bringing your testimony uh, and thanking God and telling what God has done. If you have a testimony, there is at our book table, our uh, the, the book table section there in the building, go and get a testimony card, write it down. Or if you are more uh, tech inclined, you can email us. You can uh, DM us on Instagram, message us on Facebook, however you want to get us your testimony. We ask you, please, uh, if it if it's connected to Dufresne Ministries, it could be Jesus the Healer broadcast, a service, watching a service online, being in a service, anything that's connected to God doing something to, for your life, in your life, with this ministry, we want to know about it. We rejoice over it. We read them. Our staff reads them. They don't go in a basket somewhere and sit for a long period of time and nobody knows we know about it pastor nancy knows about it our our family knows about it uh, we are grateful to hear what god has done so during this conference in this crusade please get that testimony card anytime throughout the week you can fill that out we have some upcoming conferences in marietta california that is camp meeting june 12th through the 16th with pastor nancy jerry savell jesse Deplanis, and dr bill winston and then our ladies' conference, October 3rd through the 5th. And anyone who would like to attend those and is planning to attend, any and all, make sure you register. That is very important for our planning and preparation for you to be there. So not just ministers, but all we would like to pre-register. And during camp meetings, some of you may know about this, some of you may not, uh, but there is going to be worship training sessions with Brother David Ellis during our camp meeting. That is Tuesday through Thursday at 1 p.m. These are um, open to anyone to attend. Of course, we have our uh, prayer school that week as well. So if you say music isn't my thing, I'm more of the uh, behind the scenes kind of person like myself, you can attend prayer school. So no pressure to come and bring the gift that you weren't given. Uh, if you don't have that, or if you would like to attend, you are welcome to do so. But if you play uh, any kind of part, maybe in the worship in your church, uh, it possibly could be maybe you help run sound. Um, there's some kind of part that you play with the, the music team uh, that, that you would like to have that enhance, receive impartation, direction, instruction. Uh, there is practical. There is spiritual. There is some natural things that Brother David brings. Uh, he covers it all. At, I don't know how many years he's been in Long, well, he talks about he was forced as a young child. It's It was not an option in his household, with, which was pray, praise God for all of us because that's where his training first came in as a, a young boy. And he brings his time uh, working with his father and his family members, his uncles, being in tent meetings, being in crusades, being in churches. He's done it all, been, been, all, been overseas, been here in the United States. I, you don't want to miss if you can please be in these sessions. You will greatly help your pastor. Uh, this isn't for your music ministry. It's uh, for the music uh, team and the ministry for your local church is really the goal uh, of these sessions. So we invite you to be a part of those. And then we have two more Miracle Crusades that if you're watching or you're here and you want to go to more Miracle Crusades, we have Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, August 27th through the 31st, Georgetown, Texas, October 15th through the 19th. And if you are coming to those, please register. We uh, want to spotlight a couple of books that we have tonight of Pastor Nancy. How many of you have Pastor Nancy's books in your library? Raise your hand. Oh, if you don't, uh, some of the finest teaching uh, on page is Pastor Nancy's books. This one, Following the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, if you're not following the Holy Spirit, you are following somebody. The first place we look to follow is our flesh because that's what talks the loudest. How, how many of you know that the Holy Spirit, he is a gentleman. He's our, our guide. He's our help. He is the greater one on the inside of us, but he's not always the loudest and greatest voice that we hear first. Don't expect him to talk louder than your flesh. You've got to quiet, quiet your flesh, quiet your mind, quiet the natural that's talking to you. Well, is he hard to hear? No, he's not hard to hear. It's just that we're not always in tune with our spirit man. That's where he's talking. He's always bearing witness. And so she teaches us how to become skillful at following his voice, following his leading. He is the leader of great success. I want to have success in this life. How about you? He always causes us to triumph. This is the one that the Holy Ghost is the, the leader of every victory in your life. So we've got to follow that, amen? So that book is out there. And then visitations from God. Every Sunday, every midweek, there is a visitation that God has for you that is your pastor. He is not looking to manifest himself to you uh, on your own uh, every night in some spectacular, supernatural, you know, over, I, I just want to hear from God. I just want to see God. He is being seen and he is being heard in your local church. There is a development that we are to walk in and God is expecting from us to develop how to receive from our pastor. We can become skillful. Pastor was talking about this morning. I told him, I said, I'll, how about I just quit and I come, you can be my pastor. It was so good. But see, I was trained and I was raised in how to come and sit even as a pastor, and receive from that pastoral office that God has an impartation from that pastoral office for me, that I don't need somebody uh, uh, other than really my pastor every week to come and tell me what is God saying to me. And he doesn't have to call me out. I don't need a word. Many come to church every Sunday. They want a word. They want a special, you know, impartation. It is the word of God that is your greatest help through your pastor's voice. That's going to be the greatest rescue for your life. If every day you find you need something, then every day listen to your pastor's voice. God will speak to you. Amen. So she got this revelation many years ago, and it's holding true, and it's helping people. Uh, every time they read this book, they're going, wow, I did not realize the gift that God had given me. And you say, well, I do realize that gift. Good. Well, we can become more skillful at acknowledging and receiving from that gift. And she helps us with that. And this book on worship, um, God instructed her specifically. This came from uh, direction from the Holy Ghost to pick up the revelation that Norval Hayes had on worship and daily worshiping, not worship from the platform, not being led by, it, by the music team, but your fellowship with God, your worship with God on a daily basis from your heart, from your lips, with your hands raised, and what will come from those times of fellowship and worship with him. God is wanting to visit you and wanting to fellowship with you on a daily basis. And he's got things to impart to you, things to talk to you about, things to minister to you. And I will never forget the story, uh, and Pastor Nancy tells this story, and it will help you to know what to expect as you're reading this book, that there was a pastor friend of ours, and um, his wife had her sister in town, and she had had major, major back issues. I don't know if she'd had a surgery or needed a surgery. And Norval Hayes had come before the sister had come and stayed in this pastor's home and was ministering in his church. And when uh, Brother Norval went to leave, uh, he had recognized that he would go up, this pastor would go up and hear him all throughout the day worshiping in his room, worshiping for hours laying on the bed worshiping. And, and Brother Norval would say this all the time. Many people don't receive more because they don't worship God enough. God said that to him. I have so much for them to receive, but they don't worship me enough. And it's not about uh, clocking in time. It's about getting in the presence of God. If you only go in so far to his presence, you only receive so much. And God was telling Brother Norval, there's more. If they'll make the time, there's more. 
And so this pastor's uh, sister-in-law, when Brother Norval left, she came to the house and he said, I want you to go stay in Brother Norval's bed. Go sleep in that bed. The anointing is there. Don't wash the sheets. And when she laid on those sheets because the presence of God, the anointing was manifest. It was tangible. She laid and slept on when she woke up completely whole, completely healed. Why? Because someone understood the importance. A man of God understood the importance of worship and he brought that revelation and God said to Pastor Nancy, I want you to write and continue with that revelation. I'm entrusting that revelation to you to get it keep that within the body of Christ. Amen. So these books are out there and you say, well, I've come and I need healing. Perfect. You need the Holy Ghost, a pastor, and to know how to keep your healing through worshiping God. Everything goes back to your miracle. Every revelation on that book table is going to take you back to some aspect of your miracle. So don't treat and say, I've just come. I've got this one need. Don't dismiss what God's trying to work and deal with you and minister to you on. It may be something uh, that's completely, you think's completely unrelated, but he's trying to get us our answers. Amen. Um, and then this is out there, the audio teaching of how to keep your healing. Pastor Nancy, this has been on her heart for some time. She sat in the studio and taught how many, 10 episodes, which comes out to about five hours of teaching so that you will not lose your healing, which you have received. If I can go back to Brother Norval Hayes, I heard him recently, and he talked to Rama Bible students. He was at Rama Bible tr uh, Training Center, and he said to those students, if there is one thing I've seen is that it's a shame that people come to healing meetings, and the majority of them lose what they have received because somebody is not teaching them how to keep their healing. He was instructing the students that when you want to minister healing, you teach the people how to keep what it is they receive. And he, he was emphatic and he spent about 30 minutes talking about great ministers of healing and how the majority of people would come to their meetings, receive tremendous miracles, dynamic miracles. And he said, but 90% of them would go home and they would lose what they had gotten from God because they didn't know how to release their faith and keep. And when the enemy came with symptoms telling them they weren't healed anymore. They didn't know what to do with that. So she teaches us in this series what to do when we leave this place with what we've received. We, we must do something. Amen. It is on YouTube and on our podcast, but if you would like to purchase and get this into your hands, um, it's only $25, and you say, I want it playing in my car. I want the CD of it. I don't, you know, I maybe don't have access to that. We're trying to make this available to anyone and everyone, that there's no reason why you cannot have this uh, available to you. This is very, this is so important to us. So please don't, don't, um, don't leave here without knowing where to access this resource and, and how to have this resource uh, in your life. Amen. Are you ready to give tonight? It's time for the offering. Good evening, everyone. Before we take time to receive the offering tonight, I want to say a great big thank you, Pastor Chris and Amber Cody. Stand up and let everyone greet you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I tell you, they have opened up their church to us, and I so appreciate them making all of this available. And uh, the congregation of World Harvest Church of Paducah, thank you so, so very much. We know this, that you didn't arrive just tonight for the first time with this in mind. You've been doing a lot of prep work and cleaning and organizing and getting things ready for us. So thank you for all you've done to uh, host us, and you host us so beautifully. Thank you so much. 
Uh, also, I've got some family here that I want to introduce. You saw Morgan there. Morgan is my daughter-in-law, married to my oldest son. My oldest son is not here, but she's here. And then we have Grant. Grant is back there. He's my youngest son. And he helps us. And then we have my three grandbabies. Where are they? Oh, uh, can, can, they, can they stand up on the chairs? Can they? Yeah. Okay. Stand up because y'all, y'all, y'all are little and we want people to get up on the chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bear, bear, all the way up, brother. All the way up. You didn't get all the way up. They can't see you. Okay. <laughs> they know how to greet. It's big. And so I'm so... they. I don't ever get to have all three of them with us normally. Usually one or two comes, but all three of them are here tonight. So that's a good time, right? And then uh, Brother Joel Siegel's in the house. Brother Joel, stand up. And <laughs> Brother Joel will be doing the morning services, him and Pastor Amy, his wife. And I'm assuming she's coming tonight or sometime. She's here. She's landing. She's landing. And so um, they'll be in the morning services Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. They were under Brother Hagen. He worked with him for seven years on staff, traveled with him, uh, part of the worship team. But also when you traveled with Brother Hagen as part of the worship team, you were part of the do-it-all team. And you were ushering, you were counting offerings, you were serving in any capacity. So for seven years, he got to, they got to be in that capacity. And uh, we're just grateful that God has hooked us up uh, together to do these, these crusades together. When God dealt with me about doing these, um, one night I had a dream. And in the dream, because I, I knew we were to do morning meetings, but I didn't know uh, what the format, the help of that would be. And so in the dream, I was uh, talking to his wife and asking them to come and teach in the morning meetings on prayer. And so that was a specific assignment by the Holy Ghost. So I just, when I woke up, I just did what I saw in the dream. And I called her and I said, would you and your husband uh, consider coming and doing the morning meetings? And thankfully they said yes. And ever since then, Brother Joel and Sister Amy have said that they are my dream. <laughs> You know, so anyway, they are. So I love it when God puts it together because that makes all the difference when there's divine connections. Um, Brother David Ellis will be here. He had something that came up the last minute. So he will be here, I think, Tuesday or so. Is Miss Cindy here yet? Miss, there's Miss Cindy Black all the way from, all the way from down south, sister. You made it. You just made it in. Thank you. We're so glad that you're joining us this week. And this, uh, look at this. Look at this. We have, we have a representative, representation from the Hagen ministry. Miss Deborah Banks over here. Tony Jones was, was with Brother Hagen. Miss Deborah was with Brother Hagen. And so they're all just, they're all just coming and say, and say and Regina Jolliffe is back there. Regina, she was with Dad Hagen, so we're just going to carry on, right? So thank you all for coming and being a part of that. Also, this morning, Pastor presented us with a large, large offering to get us a far way into getting the expenses of this meeting met. And I so, Pastor, thank you so much. Pastor Amber, thank you so, so much in the congregation. Thank you so much. I tell you what, let's release our faith and uh, pray over that tonight. Father, we thank you for the greatness of your plan. And Father, that these pastors and this congregation has caught the vision of what you put in our heart. They've agreed to it. They've opened their, their church home to us. They have already been so generous with us financially. Father, we thank you so much. We give you glory and honor for that. And Father, we declare the blessing of the Lord will flow mightily in their behalf in every single project, every single assignment you give them. We call it fully met. In Jesus' name, fully supplied. And for all the congregation, uh, every single need of their life, fully met. And we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Um, we, we so appreciate that they have done that. And so we, we thank them for that. Um, we, um, I don't know who's, I don't know who is, who's working the slide for me. Okay. Um, right now, can you pull up the victory? Um, right now, most, I, I'm assuming most of you know, we are, we're on the victory channel with our daily broadcast, Jesus, the healer. Um, and that, those are the different airing times that they have. Um, I don't know if you have the information of how many that reaches at all. Uh, the potential reach just with Victory Channel is 36 million homes, 36 million on that just here uh, in this nation. And then we're also on TBN, uh, Russia, TBN, Israel, we're in different places. Uh, we're on 180, in 186 countries. There's 195 countries. We're in 186 of them. But a new opportunity somebody has invited us on and we have said yes to this. And uh, this is called the Faith Broadcasting Network. And um, I don't, I probably need, Nathan, I probably need to have, you feed me information. But um, can you put up the map of where that, okay, so you can see, uh, can that be enlarged on your end at all? I don't know if that can. But you can see, if I could say this, the transparent colors that are up there, they have four different arms of that network that are listed below, Faith TV, Faith Africa, Faith UK, and Faith terrestrial and um, so where you see all of those transparent colors that's the reach that is another 246 million homes we are going on daily daily um, in all these countries and I don't know how many countries that reaches but it is they invited us on and they're in um, they're in partnership with Brother Copeland. They said normally with that network, anytime somebody wants to broadcast on there, they have to take it before a board and get it approved. But because we're, we are part of Brother Copeland, they said, you're on. So they, and they, they approached us. We didn't approach them and they approached us. So that starts the first Monday of July. Not that you're going to be over there watching it, but... <laughs> God is opening doors. And so when, when people are so generous like this congregation and what they've done for us here, it helps us to do more of this. And so we're so, so grateful for that privilege and opportunity. Amen. Um, I want you to turn with me, if you would. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The Amplified Classic Translation says this, and God is able. When you just start with that, it diffuses all difficulty, all struggle. It eliminates it. God is able to make all grace, all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you. Look at this, in abundance. Not just the, they come, but how they come is in abundance. So that you may look at this always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Notice this, there's so much abundance that it's not just going to take care of your need, then he throws in every charitable work. So that means that no matter how great your need is that you're facing, there's more than enough for that and you don't have to cut back on being generous. I said, you don't have to cut back on being generous just because you're faced with a need. Right now, I am, uh, many of you have heard the testimony of how God gave me Amy Simple McPherson's castle. It, it was her vacation home, and we're in the process right now of renovating that. So that's underway, and um, in doing that, uh, I thought, well, I'll just take all my finances and streamline them because that's not the ministry, that's me personally. And I don't know how, you say how much it's gonna cost, beats me. <laughs> because it's like when it's a historical property, you peel back a layer and hey, there's another place to, 
to be thankful over. <laughs> There's another place waiting for your arrival, you know, and so I don't know how much it's going to be, but I know this more than enough, more than enough to take care of it. And so I was, you know, just kind of in the back of the mind, I'm thinking, okay, Nancy, I'll just streamline. But I've noticed that my heart didn't streamline. <laughs> that God's telling me, do this, do that. I mean, even personally, he's not cut back on anything so that this one thing can be supplied. Why? Because as God can do more than one thing at a time. I helped the pastor with that, right? God helped us with that, didn't he? Um, I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 24. How many of you know God can do more than one thing at a time? He can fund your need and then also give you more than enough to be generous towards someone else's need. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? So when God puts something big in front of you, don't start cutting back other places. Because that's, that's signifying that he's not more than enough for all sufficiency in all things. Amen. He doesn't, he doesn't cut us back to, to send us forth in another. He just keeps adding arms of generosity to us. Amen. So Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 24, it says this, And it shall be that before they call, I will answer. Look at that, before. So what's that mean? The answer is prepared before the call is sent forth means the need that you may have in your life, he's already got an answer before you even brought it up, before you even talked to him about it. So it says, and it shall be that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Notice this, we still have to speak it, although it's already, the answer's already prepared and waiting. It's waiting for our faith to do some asking and calling. Amen. So this lets us know that we can have full supply before we ever are faced with the bill. <laughs> That God will not just keep us trying to catch up with bills, catch up with payments. He will put us in front of what is due. I said he will put us in front of what is due. I remember that maybe Pastor Debbie would remember because I don't quite remember the year that God spoke to my husband and he said this about 97. He said, 97, God spoke to my husband, said, woke him up in the middle of the night and said, 97 of my people, 97% of my people are living beneath what I provided for them. That means only 3% of the body of Christ is pressing into all that's available. And then I was flicking across years ago across the television and just on a financial broadcast, they said 97% of the world's wealth is controlled by 3% of the people. And I said, that's the exact same percentage that God said about the body of Christ. So notice this, if we're going to move out of the 97%, and be part of the 3%, we can't think like 97% of the people think. What's that mean? We're invited to higher thinking. We're invited to take the limits off of God and quit restricting Him to one thing at a time. If we restrict Him to one thing at a time, He wants to do more than one thing at a time. But our thinking, our speaking, our asking puts limits on Him. So notice this, always having, all sufficiency. Notice the economy isn't mentioned. Why? Because our covenant is outside the reach of the economy. It's beyond the reach 
of the economy. No matter what's going on. I, I love something that God said to John Osteen, Pastor John Osteen in the 80s, I believe it was. It might have been early 90s, but there was a bit of a recession sometime during those, that time frame. And God spoke to him and he said, I want you to build a 10,000 seat auditorium. He said, I don't want you to receive one offering designated for it. And he said, and I want it completed in a year during the middle of a recession. <laughs> Paid for, cash. <laughs> He didn't receive an offering. God said, just tell the people to be, just be faithful with your tithes and offerings. Just be faithful with your tithes and offerings. So they, they did that right in the middle of a recession. Paid cash. Why? Because when it starts looking low in the world, that's when God starts multiplying. And he starts, his miracle power starts working in a whole nother degree for those who will believe him, that if you look through Bible times at a time of, of difficulty in the economic arena, that was the time that God promoted his people. So don't talk, don't get, don't get caught up in the talk of what is, is going on uh, in the nation economically because we have a covenant that is outside the reach of that thing. Yes. 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 That's right. You say, well, you're just not even sober. I just know what the Word says. Yeah. Amen. 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 And during that time, I love something that Pastor John Osteen said to his congregation. He said, for those of you who are watching the news, I hear that you're going through a recession. <laughs> but for those of us who aren't watching, we're not going through it. You can choose to be a part of whatever flow you want to be a part of. All sufficiency flow or we don't know what's coming flow. We do know what's coming because when God says always having all sufficiency, what's he doing? He's showing us our future. I said he is showing us our future. That's our future. Amen. Because faith, faith will work what no economy can. Amen. Well, praise God. How about it? We changed that. We flipped those numbers. Not 97 percent living beneath. 90, 97, 100 percent living where we ought to be living. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight uh, we're believing for double to come in this week of what the expenses of these meetings are. Would you set, our, set your faith with us? Would you believe God with us? Amen. Well, there's an offering envelope on your seat, I, I assume. Is that right? Okay. Uh, so if you're giving by cash, you can take one of those offering envelopes. If you're giving by check, making it payable to DM, Dufresne Ministries, then up on the screens, there's a uh, text to give. They have the information. If you will text the letters DM to the number that's on the screen. And then if you want to give online, DufresneMinistries.org slash give, you can go to our website and give that way. We make it easy for you to give, have different options of how you want to give. But always give something. I just purpose that when I go to services, I always get involved. I, I get involved in every flow of the service. And when the offering is part of the flow, I want every part of the flow. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's just a good spiritual habit. That's a renewed mind. Amen. When you get your offering made out, let's just hold it up before the Lord and worship him with our giving tonight. Father, we're so grateful for the greatness of your plan. This week we've come together. We're not just coming to spectate. We come expecting. We, come to we have come to flow with the fullness of your plan, the greatness of your plan for these services. We, we thank you in advance for all that you have for us. And we, we take it. We receive it. Now, Father, we also, we bring our faith when we give tonight. We release our faith in you, our provider. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for the avenues of income. But we say this, they're not our provider. You are our provider. And so no matter what avenue you use, we know this, that we will always be provided for. 
And so we glorify you tonight as our provider, and we declare together, let's say it together, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Ushers, you can go ahead.
Glorify your name. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we magnify you. We glorify you, we magnify you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. I, um, y'all can just stay up there if you don't mind. Um, I, um, yesterday and today was working on the sermons. <laughs> and, um, just moments before I was walking out of the hotel room, God started changing it. I so appreciate that. No, I really do, because I don't want to bring mine and miss his. So I don't care if I've worked for days or weeks on something. Uh, what he breathes on is the help. And... Um, he started talking to me about praising and worshiping. Um, there, is, there is a proper approach. There is a proper approach to heaven. The word says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? That you may obtain nothing goes unmet at the throne i said nothing goes unmet at the throne that's the place of obtaining but you don't just step from the natural right there there's an approach we know that the greater ones on the inside of us but there is an actual location where god sits his throne is and we're told the proper approach to that location. We approach it by faith. But the word tells us, um, come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So notice the progression. You go to the gates and the gates give you access to the courts and then the throne, right? But notice, the, it's not appropriate to come with the wrong approach. Come into his gates with thanksgiving. Not with worry. Not with fear. Not with doubt. But with... Come into his gates with thanksgiving. I don't care what you're facing, but if you'll turn away from that toward him through thanksgiving, there's an approach to the presence of God in that. And no need goes unmet in his presence. Amen. It's not about staying in this realm and trying to get God to do something. It's about us choosing our world. And Jesus is the open door that we don't have to just stay footed in this or planted in this realm. Just the natural. But by faith, we come into his presence and we receive our needs met. But there's an approach. I said, there's an approach. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. You can be seated for a few moments if you would, and we'll just follow how he leads us tonight. Amen. Yeah, and y'all can be seated if you want. Just stay accessible. That's what I like, right? Victory does not mean that everything you need is in your current possession. It means you know how to access any help you need. Amen. That's it. Amen. 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 Jesus, when the multitudes and he told the disciples, you feed them. 
they did not have in their current possession all the food to feed the multitudes. But the skill of Jesus' fellowship and his faith with his Father and his approach to the Father in the face of a need, that he was able to access by faith the provision that would affect this realm. It's not about looking at your wallet and saying, do I have enough? Are we, <laughs> do we have access? Yes. By the blood of yes. Jesus, we have access to all that we need. So quit looking at what you currently can calculate and say, can I move forward? Can I? <laughs> it's about accessing, accessing what he does not withhold from us, and he's already made it ours. So we're not trying to convince him to do something for us. He's made all blessings ours. It's about us accessing. What do you think, and if you've ever heard testimony or read any books that talks about heaven, you will never hear an account of heaven without it also being talked about the praises and the worship that goes on continually. It's the flow of heaven. It permeates the atmosphere of heaven. That you can also, you can read often any account and one will say, praise the Lord. And then the whole region just, praise the Lord. Why? Because that's the flow and in that atmosphere, it's a heavenly atmosphere. We can live there before we go there. Amen. By doing what they do. Yes. When we start doing what heaven is doing, yes. we set heaven's atmosphere so around us. Amen. 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 And we determine what world we live out of. Yes. And I, there's no way to access all that is ours without this dynamic force of faith. Because we do that by faith. I was reading, God, God dealt with me about going back and reading the life story of Oral Roberts that he wrote, not that others wrote about him, but he wrote. And then he has another book. There's another book called The 12 Greatest Miracles of My Ministry. All, these books have been out of print. And I was finishing up one of them. I was reading down in Florida. I was out one afternoon, and I had finished that book. And I was walking back, one of the books, those two books, and was walking back to the hotel, and Brother Richard Roberts called me. And I said, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm reading your daddy's books, <laughs> and I'm wondering something. How come they're out of print? Yeah, <laughs> come on. And he said, a publishing company has just picked them up, and they're coming back into hey, print. Yeah phenomenal, and he talks about how the anointing came into his hand and how that healing ministry, what the steps he took and how God met his faith in that. And Brother Oral Roberts made this statement. He said, if I could get the people to quit looking at their bodies Amen. and see themselves before Jesus, I could get them healed every time because now they're in faith. Praising and worshiping God translates us from this realm into that flow. Angels will get involved when they hear praise and worship because that's the flow they're accustomed to. And when they hear that flow replicated, they get involved wow. because they're involved in that flow yes. in heaven. Amen. And some of what we need from heaven is going to take the involvement of angels. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Amen. 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 Everything is fully met in heaven. There's no need unmet. And so there, the, the residents of heaven are just enjoying and lapping up the abundance of God as they praise. 
Can I tell you, that's how we do the same thing. We lap up the abundance of heaven doing the same thing. Amen. Miracles, healings, and answers. Every answer for the need of your life flows from his realm. Approach his realm. How? Come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and we become a partaker of that flow. I was listening to, um, I was listening to um, one minister talk about they were in a service, and um, a lady came up after a service to this one minister. She wasn't ministering in the service, but she was just part of the, the, the staff that was there. And this woman came into the service that had never been around a teaching of on faith or healing, but she heard about these, this ministry, that, a particular ministry that ministered to those who are sick, and so she came. And she sat after the service with this staff member and said, I've been given a death sentence by the medical industry. And she said, uh, I want God to do something for me. Amen. And I so love what this minister did. And she said, you know something? I don't know all that you're facing or all that you need. I don't know how to change this, but I know how to get you to the one. Yes. Bring you to the one who changes this. Meaning no pressure for the minister. Even Jesus said, he said, my father in me, he does the works. The skill is staying hooked up to the father, the flow of the father. You do that by staying hook up, hooked up to the word, following the Holy Spirit, hooked up to your spirit. Because he leads us through our own spirit. Yes. And so this minister said, uh, because this one said, this, I've never heard teaching like this. I don't even understand some of the things that I heard taught in the service tonight. And the minister said, it's not so much that you understand everything. It's about you receive of the one. Amen. So she said, I tell you what, uh, I can help you go there if you'll come with me. And she just began to worship God and worship God. And she said to the woman, just do what I do. And so this woman who needed healing just started worshiping. She watched her and she started doing the same thing. And they, they, they just sat at the back of the auditorium, the two of them, worshiping together because it's not always what you have in current possession but you know how to access yes. Yes. and that's what this minister was doing accessing what this woman needed and they sat and worshiped together for about 20 minutes and at the end of it the woman said all oh, the pain is gone the part of her body that she could check, it had changed. Why? Because no need goes unmet at the throne. Amen. It's just simple. It's just simple. And I so appreciate that the Holy Ghost is dealing with us about how we approach him this week. How we approach him. That in this first service of the miracle service, that it's not just by approaching him, telling him our need, but it's approaching yes. him in thanksgiving yes. for what he, coming to his gates with thanks yes. for what he's already done. He wants you to rehearse and remember yes. what has he already done for you so that you have a, you have it faith, you have experience with him. Yes. That when you have a need that you need to bring before him maybe this week, you, you're looking back to the experience of what you know that he's already done for you. We thank him for what he has already done. Coming to his gates with thanksgiving. People who are forgetful of what he's already done are hindered in their faith. Come on, come on. 
That's so good. Lord. Yes. Right. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and then you come in to praise. Can I tell you this? The majority of your day as a Christian should be spent worshiping and praising. Yes. The flow of your day. Yes. I'm not saying you're taking a stance like this all day, but as you're driving your car, praise the Lord. Father, I thank you. Because it holds you in his presence. Why? Because praising and worshiping is one of the highest ways to release your faith. And it keeps your faith on the tip of your tongue. If I could say it that way. You're releasing your faith all the time. His praise shall continually what? Be in my mouth. Come on. Why? Because when his praise is continually in our mouth, our faith is continually in our mouth. And he answers faith. He has, if I could say this, tricked us into being effective. <laughs> Releasing our faith by saying his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Amen. He's letting us know in Philippians what he was doing while he's in jail. He's rejoicing. Do you know the primary thing I did the day my husband went home to be with the Lord and the weeks after? I worship you, Father. I worship you. I worship you. Why? I have to stay fixed on the right realm. Yes. I have to stay tapped into the higher flow. Yes. Why? Because the lower flow needed so much. I needed so many answers. I needed so much help. And so I knew the, the, higher, the higher flow has all the answers, all the help for this realm. That's right. My... My job is to just stay connected to the answer realm. And not get in the mental arena trying to figure out my answer because my answer does not live in my mind. It flows from our Father. Amen. Um, and I just worshiped, and I worshiped, and I worshiped, and I worshiped. Not for the event, but because of who he was in spite of in that spite event. Of that. Amen. 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 That's right. And what I expected him to do for us in the face of that Amen. event. And what I expected the outcome to be. Because the devil wasn't just... When you look at what God has done since that event, in 186 countries... Preaching the word every day. The devil was trying to derail some things. He was not, he was trying to get the prophet of God out of the way, no doubt. But he knew there was multiplication coming and he was trying to abort multiplication. But what kept that strategy from hitting its target? I worship you, Father. I worship you. I praise you. I glorify you. I didn't have to figure out anything. I just praised my way through, through that strategy of the enemy. Aborting its intent. The devil didn't just want to get my husband out of the way. He wanted the ministry out of the way. He wanted me out of the way. He wanted my children out of the way. He wanted our local church out of the way. He wanted everything out of the way that God had, had done. And it didn't work. It accelerated. It accelerated. It multiplied. It just multiplied. Amen. And you say, how does it work that way, the genius of God? I didn't have to figure out anything. I just worshipped it out. I, I want to read to you something. Let me read a verse of Scripture. Let me find it. You'll remember the passage with David. He had gotten with a little gal named Bathsheba. <laughs> 
and he, anyway. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 12, a child came out of that union. Right. And um, because David sinned and missed God in what he had done. And um, we'll start reading in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And so a child that was born out of that ended up on their deathbed. And it reads in verse 16, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16, David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto David, and he would not listen unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead. But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Verse 20, then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. In the face of tragedy, what should be our first response? In the face of emergency, in the face of challenge, worship. So it said, he came into the house of the Lord and he worshiped. Then he came to his own house. Notice this. He wasn't ready to deal with his personal life until his spiritual life had taken the ascendancy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 He got off of him the event. It didn't say that he wallowed in that for days and weeks. As soon as the child is dead, turn the page. That's it. The day my husband went home to be with the Lord, I told her kids, we're turning the page. We're not changing the book. Yeah. We're not throwing out all that was yeah. gained. We're not rewriting and trying to find a different flow or something that we think is more important. We're staying in the same book, but we're turning the page and writing a new chapter, and we're not blotting out the previous chapters. Yeah. Because the previous chapters help us map our chart. Yeah. Where we're headed, we can look and see all that my husband put in us and all the men of God that has spoken into our lives. We're not walking into the future unequipped. Amen. We're turning the page and we're rewriting. Oh, that's right. And we're, 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 we're writing in our life the plan that God authored. Amen. And that's what David did. People might not have understood our response. But I just know this, there was still a plan to fulfill. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there are going to be people that enter your life and exit your life. And it matters how you treat those times. Because the devil wants to use transition to take you off course. Yes. What holds you on course? Worship. It anchors you. Amen. Amen. So it says, and he came into the house of the Lord and worshiped, and then he came to his own house. He wasn't ready to deal with family members until he had dealt with God through worship. Many times that's the problem. People are trying to address their problems when they haven't addressed worship yet. Address worship, you'll know how to deal with your problems. Why? Because in his presence, you'll hear. And that's where faith lives, where God speaks. Faith lives in God's words. You've got to hear what he says to you. 
people trying to have faith apart from hearing what God says. There is no faith apart from God's words. Faith comes by hearing. We know this, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, it doesn't just come by you listening to someone's sermon. It comes by hearing from God. You didn't just hear from the preacher. You heard from God through the mouth of the preacher. If you're just hearing the preacher, that's not, faith won't be there. But if you hear God through the mouth of the preacher, you're hearing from God himself. And that's where faith lives. It's not about figuring out your help. It's hearing. I had... Um, I had someone recently ask me, they said, because it wasn't just my husband's home going I had to deal with. It was the projects. It was legal matters. It was financial matters. Thing needed several million dollars immediately. And they said, how did you bear up under that? I said, I didn't. I worshiped through it. Because worship is the releasing of faith. And when you're in the flow of faith, all that you need is received in that flow. Amen. And I said, in the worshiping, I heard. He told me what to do. Day by day, I heard. I had to hear. Worship was the hearing place. It wasn't just hearing a sermon. It was hearing what he said. I'm not belittling sermons, but if you just hear a man's voice, that's not enough. You've got to have something authored in you through the words of God that came through a man's voice. Yes, but no sermon can replace you hearing God for yourself. Hearing for yourself. When you hear for yourself, doubt's no struggle against you. I heard. Why? The Bible says God's voice is as many waters. It just floods you. It floods you. I'm not talking about in volume. I'm talking about in stability. You're anchored. Right. Right. Praise God. Amen. So it says, David came into the house of the Lord and worship. Then he came to his own house. And when he required, they set bread before him and he did eat. What's this mean? He resumed living. He resumed living. Many people are living in what has happened in their past. They're living with ever mindful, and ever talking, holding what someone has done. And I don't belittle or make light of things that might have happened against your life, but they are not your life. God has something bigger to go on into. Resume living. <laughs> Verse 21, then said his servants unto him, what thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, you, you rose and you ate. Like you were just having, like it was no big deal to you. You just acted like it, the event never happened. And, and he said, Verse 22, and he said, when the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept for, wept, for I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? How many of you know this isn't about whether God's gracious or not? Yeah, right. Disobedience stole him, yeah. stole from him. Right. It was, God didn't have anything to do with that. That's right. That's right. Verse 23, but now he's dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? Look at this. In other words, no, I can't. Me acting this way won't change what just happened. Right. 
me getting depressed, me getting worried, me becoming fearful, you becoming depressed, you becoming fearful, you becoming, you struggling over things that come against your life won't change it. No, that's right. He said, but now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? No. But he says, I shall go to him. Meaning, this isn't over yet. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because for the believer, no one leaves your life. Amen. That move to a different location of heaven. They're in your future. You're, they're, you're just, go to them. But he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. <laughs> what made all the difference? What David did at the moment of tragedy, he worshipped. Because he worshipped, God could restore. And God gave him a son that walked in peace, wisdom, and wealth. And he was able to carry on what David had in his heart of building the temple. All because David did the right thing at a critical time. He worshipped instead of grieved. Now, I'm not saying people don't weep or it's wrong. I'm saying to get under the flow or the spirit of grief and sorrow will not put you in heaven's flow. Amen. Amen. Now, Morgan was referring to the book on worship. What God said to me, I don't necessarily preach Brother Norville's sermons. I mean, who could preach Brother Norville's stuff the way Brother Norville? He could say things it's unlawful for me to say. <laughs> I mean, he could say things and people would thank him. If I said it, I'd get booted, you know. But taking what God said to him, so what God said isn't lost. The light that God gave isn't lost. God spoke to Brother Norval and he said this, My children basically love me. In a general sense. My children basically love me, but they live in poverty and sickness and defeat. So notice this basic love won't change that just I love the Lord just living life mindlessly being content to just say I love him and he loves me you got to know something you got to know something he said my children basically love me but they live in poverty and sickness and defeat they don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough Listen to that. He didn't say they don't worship him. He said they don't worship me enough. What's enough? Dad Hagen used to tell us, praise brings the anointing, and the anointing destroys the yoke. That's why his praise shall continually be in my mouth, because then no yoke can get, can get on us. It keeps yokes from being able to attach to our lives. So we could say it this way. When he said they don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough, they don't worship him long enough for the anointing to come into manifestation and destroy the yoke. I'm so glad that God is reminding us of these things because a miracle is not something for nothing. Meaning, in, in this phrase, well, I'm just waiting for God and his sovereignty to give me a miracle. Well, that's not even what sovereignty means. That's exactly right. It's been wrongly used. That word has been wrongly used. You know what sovereign means? If you will open maybe some King James Version of the Bible at the front, it says dedicated to the sovereign King James, he was literally a man, That's right? right? Yep. When they use the word sovereign, they say they call a king sovereign. That means there's no one in that kingdom higher than him. Yeah. That's, right. That's what sovereign means. There's no one above him. Uh -huh. 
So when you talk about God being sovereign, that means no one's above him. That's right. yeah. There's no power, no force, no ability above him. He is sovereign. It doesn't mean he does anything he wants anytime he wants, because that's the way the religious world has defined sovereignty. That's not sovereignty. Because every king abides by laws. Every king has guidelines that run and govern their realm, and they cannot break those laws. And God has laws, and it's called the law of faith, the law of love, and brother, we better know them. Because that's how he moves, by faith. A miracle is not something for nothing. You've got to bring faith. Amen. 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 The faith of worship is part of the law of faith. Faith to worship. Amen. And you say, well, I know of people who received a miracle and they didn't know anything about faith. Somebody knew something about faith. Somebody had faith because you can't get a miracle for nothing. No one even got saved without Jesus paying a price. Right. And no one received that salvation till they brought their faith to receive. Amen. That's right. To receive him as Savior. There is no such thing as a miracle for nothing. No such thing. And that's what people are wanting many times in the untaught, unrenewed mind. They're just sitting back waiting for something to show up in their behalf. You don't have to live that kind of a life. That's a victim mentality, yes. waiting, for, waiting for the generosity that's already been made yours. It's you coming boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain. It's you coming into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. You determine the flow of that power. The sovereignty of God, so to speak, in the way it's taught wrongly is God determines it. Uh, amen. Yeah. Right. But first of all, that's not sovereignty. Right. And second of all, that's not how, that's not word-based. Word it's not word-based. No, Every transaction of your life is based on faith in God's word. That's it. Period. Every single one. <laughs> amen. And part of that flow of faith is worship. If we will stay and put in place the spiritual habit of worshiping God, it will hold us in the flow of heaven. It will hold us to where our faith is ever ready. We don't have to go find it somewhere. Try to dig down. Try to pray long enough to get it. Try to read the Bible because it doesn't come that way. But you know what people do, all the kind of spiritual gymnastics trying to work it up. We just keep it ever ready. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. At a moment, we can access it. Victory is accessing what's already been made yours. Amen. That's right. Amen. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Yeah. What am I saying? It's not hard. Not hard. No. Even though you... You know, on this side, on this side, in the natural realm, your situation may look tangled. Uh -huh. It may look very involved. It may look complicated, but not on God's side. No. Right. Everything is simple in his realm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, good. so God said to Brother Norval, they don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough or long enough for the anointing to come into manifestation and destroy the yoke. Brother, uh, to Brother Norval, God said this, you're teaching faith and confession. Well, that's right to do. You're praying for the sick. That's right to do. But you need to worship me more. And you need to teach my people to worship me more. Notice this. People have to be taught this lifestyle. Why? Because this world is teaching the wrong flow. You turn on the news, brother, it'll try to pump a different flow into your day. 
a different way of thinking into your day. People have to be taught that's not the flow. The flow for the believer is a life of worship. The flow for the believer is a life of worship. Why? That's a life of faith. That's a life of walking in love toward God. Can I say this? Faith worketh by love. And too many times we only talk about the love toward humans, but what about our love toward God? Come on. So he said, you need to worship me more and you need to teach my people to worship me more. You have to be taught to worship when tragedy shows up. <laughs> you have to be taught to worship when there's not enough money to pay what you need to pay. Dad Goodwin, who was a, a close friend of Dad Hagen's, that Dad Hagen had such a rapport with this man. And Dad Goodwin said, whenever I needed money, he said, I'd go in my office, close the door, and start dancing. You have to be taught to do that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to the natural mind that when your bills are behind, you dance. You have to be taught something. You have to know something to do something like that. And you go, well, I dance around. Yeah, but you have to understand understand <laughs> it's not just moving around to some beat you like it's the release of faith through dancing it's the release of faith through praise it's the release of faith through rejoicing it's the release of faith through worship it's not just saying something it's releasing faith as you say something So he said, you need to teach my people to worship me more. I, I guarantee you, the world did not teach me that when my husband died to walk into my bedroom and lift my hands and start worshiping God. God taught me that. Men of God that God put in my life taught me that. that men of God taught me. Did anybody say to you, Pastor Nancy, at a time of tragedy worship, no, but they taught me to follow my spirit. And in my spirit, that was what the Holy Ghost led me to do. It kept me out of the mental arena, which is the arena of harassment. The devil is afraid of your faith. That's why he tries to keep you separated from it by draw, trying to draw you up into the mental arena because there's no faith in your mind. The faith of God is in your spirit. All the mind can do is be renewed to the faith that's in your spirit. But there is no faith living in your mind. So the devil's always trying to draw us up into the mental arena because he separates us from where our faith flows from. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Keeps your tongue hooked up to the faith in your spirit. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So that you're talking out of your spirit and not out of your mind. Listen to this. He said, you need to teach my people to worship me more. I'm their God and they're my children. Now, let me back up when he said, you need to teach my people to worship me more at a time when it looked like one of the projects and these projects that needed to be completed that my husband had started and had been trying for five years to complete so we had to get these completed and God enabled us within a year all of them were completed plus several millions of dollars of debt paid off and God in a God did that just by hearing because I tell you, I'm no, I'm no business genius, but he is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, whenever, whenever I would worship and praise, I heard. I heard. When you need to hear, quit trying to figure it out and start worshiping. Amen. So it looked like one of these projects was collapsing, so to speak. It was not coming together. And if one, if I could say this didn't happen, it would have a domino effect on all the projects. They, there, was a, there was a link and an order of how these things had to be completed. And I just got up on my patio one morning and I just, I started speaking to myself. I started worshiping and then I got in the spirit 
and I started speaking out in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And I noticed this, that these prophecies that started coming out, they all had this common word victory in them. So I knew the outcome of this thing was going to be victory. So I just got up and I had this sense to get up and dance in my pajamas, on my back patio. I just got up and started dancing. And while I was dancing, I heard. Why? Because in the worship, you hear. And I got up and I was dancing. And while I was doing that, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, in the rejoicing, power flows. Many times people are trying to get through their confession list and they haven't tapped into the flowing of the power through worship. Amen. In the rejoicing, power flows. I, I saw firsthand that happen when the days after my husband, I'm just worshiping and worshiping. And so power kept flowing to every single need. Why? Because faith is what spoke forth that praise and worship. And faith is an open door. Faith does not heal you. Faith does not pay your bills. God does. But that faith opens the door for God to do it. Amen. Praise keeps the door open. Praise keeps the door open. Praise keeps the door open. Don't ever close the door to God. No. Don't ever close the door to God. Come on. Praising keeps the door open to God and closed to the enemy. Amen. So, God said to Brother Norval, you need to teach my people to worship me more. I'm their God and they're my children. Listen to this. If you'll teach my children to worship me more, I will do great and mighty things for them. Notice what God has in mind, great and mighty things. And can I tell you this, that only people who are enlarged spiritually through worship can contain great and mighty things. Only people who live a life of worship are safe with great and mighty things. Because great and mighty things have taken many people off course. And if people learn how to worship and God can trust them to worship him, then he can trust them with great and mighty things. Well, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Miracles are not something for nothing. And don't think they are. Every miracle some man got involved in. Somebody did. You say, well, look at the man by the pool of Bethesda. His own faith was not involved in that because his faith was not mentioned. He didn't even know who Jesus was. In the temple afterwards, they said, who told you to take up your bed and walk? He says, I don't know. I don't know his name. <laughs> he didn't, he'd never heard him preach. He didn't know anything about him. But he still received a miracle. Why? Because of Jesus' skill. Skill with knowing the Holy Spirit and that man being healed through a gift of the Spirit. See, it's not a miracle for nothing. Somebody has to know something. Somebody has to know something. And one of the greatest things to know is worship and praise. Because that's the entrance into the flow of heaven in your life. Learn to put a spiritual habit in place. Worshiping when you wake up. Worshiping as you're getting dressed. Worshiping as you're driving to work. Worshiping even to yourself quietly while you're doing your work. Not neglecting your work because a man pays for your time. You give him your time. Yeah. You can't steal from God and please, you can't steal from your boss and please God while you're doing that. <laughs> but your heart can be turned yeah. while your hand is turned toward the work of a man that he's paying you for. Amen. Amen. Going to bed, worshiping. Going to sleep, worshiping. Give yourself that spiritual habit because our life is a picture of our habits. Amen. Amen. Well, stand with me to your feet. Praise God. All right. Y'all help me. Do whatever's in your heart. 
Let's do it. How about we're not just hearers of the word, we're doers. Amen. We worship you, Father. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice tonight. We worship you. We glorify you. Can I say this? If you're self-conscious, so to speak, to worship freely, it's only an indication of one thing. You need more practice. Amen? You just need more practice. So that it flows without effort. And it flows without stumbling over the mental, the natural side. Amen? So just lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. And if I could say this, turn your heart toward Him. We worship you. We glorify. Just go ahead. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, just lift up your sound.
Those things that you thought you had to counsel out, you can worship out. People say, I got to talk it out. People don't realize when they're talking it out, they're letting it in. And it starts getting entrenched and tripping them up. You can worship it out. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. Counsel is not the comforter. Counsel comes from the comforter. But the act of counsel with others is not the comfort. I'm not saying it's wrong to talk to people. I'm saying it's wrong to rehearse and rehearse and draw from the past and put it into your present and color everything of your life with what happened back there because your past is worthy of one thing forgetting amen so I, I just whatever is just been a struggle just inwardly Maybe an event, maybe a relationship, maybe a tragedy, maybe a disappointment that just seems to live with you. It doesn't have to. It, I said, it doesn't have to. And you can, in this atmosphere, say, I'm done with that because there's so much more for me. And the Holy Ghost will be, if I could say this, like a divine vacuum that just goes in. And every little bit of residue so that we're not carrying something of the past into somebody else's life and into our own future. Amen. Praise the Lord. Worship will do all that. There's nothing you can't praise your way out of. And there's nothing you can't praise your way into. Sometimes you need out of places and sometimes you need into places. But Paul and Silas praised their way out before the gates opened, before the prison doors opened. They were already out. Because I've, I've just been amazed at reading, when you read about that and how the earthquake that came and opened all the doors and took, loosed all the bands, and they just sat there. Brother, me, I'm out the door. But they didn't. When they saw that door fling open, they sat there. Why? Because they weren't led by these doors. They had already opened doors. They had already exited. So they were staying there being led. And the jailkeeper, no doubt, became the next pastor in that city. They took it, he took them to, their, to his home and the whole family got saved and he had a, his own congregation started. All because they didn't pick up and dodge out the first door that opened. They opened the door. And then they needed out and praise got him out. But then there was the Israelites that God had a land for them and Jericho was right in front of them and they needed in. And they circled around that city seven days, didn't say a word. And then the shout of praise on that seventh day, and they're in. In your life, you're going to find things you need out of and things you need into. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Amen. Aren't you glad it's that simple? It's that, if, we, if we'll do it, if we'll do it because there's no such thing as a miracle for nothing. Jesus paid the price, but we have to do the receiving. And it's our faith that receives. Amen. Hallelujah. So I say, for those of you who have been twisted up on the inside, 
just by an event or something that you just haven't let go of today that's done today it's done no more right now right now it's done that that you know what that means you're authorized to never think about it again and can I say this that means your dinner conversation has to change not talking about it anymore why because it's it's done it's over it's over the blood of Jesus cleanses it away amen hallelujah somebody's lower back is being healed right now who who is that just reach up and receive that in fact just act on that faith believing God means acting on the word acting like the word is true so right where you're at just bend over do something move side to side do something you could not do before because now you can do it I said now you can do it now you can do it that back pain leaves the power of God is recreating discs that have been I don't know what the word is degener degenerated yeah put back put back worship puts back what was lost worship puts it back move around do something you could not do we're not checking it to see if it worked we're giving action to that word we believe we believe amen hallelujah hallelujah and it is affecting this lower back this lower back area here it's going all through the hip area straightening out the pelvis the pelvis the pelvis is being adjusted made whole you know what I so appreciate when Jesus walked up to the man at the pool of Bethesda he said wilt thou be made whole notice he didn't just offer him healing he offered him wholeness don't just settle for pain gone get everything back get everything back whole 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 wholeness that's what Jesus offers and provided but we settle sometimes for just the body to act right when we want it whole again amen move that around move that around in that pelvis area the power of God's working in that pelvis area we worship you Jesus let's let's thank him for that we let's worship him Jesus we thank you for that power we thank you for that power working not only that there are organs that have not been properly sitting they've they're not where they ought to be the power of God puts that back amen and you say what are you talking about pastor Nancy I'm talking to the one who knows what I'm talking about because the one that applies to you know what I'm talking about I don't have to know what I'm talking about but you know what I'm talking about <laughs> amen we worship you Jesus just receive that just receive that we thank you father for the angels of heaven working in people's bodies not because they're the healer but because they cooperate with healing power and they're adjusting things in internally right now organs that need to be adjusted that is going on right now amen hallelujah some of you may even tangibly sense or feel something happening you don't have to feel it for it to be happening but you may even sense that happening but faith can receive it no matter what it feels or doesn't feel we thank you for it Jesus we thank you for it Jesus we thank you for it Jesus we glorify you we glorify we magnify you we magnify you something about someone's knees it seems to me you've been told you need a knee replacement well you're getting it tonight you get that knee replacement tonight do what you could not do I said do what you could not do lift that up squat down on that do something that would have would have told you no before you tell it yes 
because God said yes. Amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen. Hallelujah. 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 And the power of God is going up vertebrae right now, making vertebrae properly aligned. Hallelujah. 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 If, that's, if that describes your need, respond to that. Respond to that. Why? It's not a miracle. It's not something for nothing. Respond to that. Hallelujah. We have to respond. Amen. Faith responds. I said faith responds. Faith is not silent. Faith responds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do something you could not do. Bend somehow. I don't care if you're going to take up room to do it. Do it. Get out in the aisle. Go to the back or something if you need to have room to move around. Do what you need to do to give action to that anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We worship you. We glorify you. We glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You're such a wonderful healer. We magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, I've got a certain condition that you didn't call out. But did you hear? that what was called out was just to let you know that what he does for the ones you heard called out, he'll do for those he didn't call out. The, the, word, of, the word of knowledge is not a healing lottery. It was your number called. It's to stir the faith in you to say, wait a minute, if he'll heal their backs, if he'll heal their pelvis, he'll heal mine. So just receive it. Don't wait for it to be called out. Thank God for that flow. But you're not limited to that. Hallelujah. We honor the gifts of the Spirit when they're in manifestation. And we want to respond to that, but he's not calling out some so that others can walk out without theirs. He's, he's trying to stimulate faith in those of you who heard what was called out and say, mine too, mine too, I take it, 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 I take it. You only ever receive from God what you take. Amen. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven invites violence, and the violent take it by force, the force of faith. Amen. That verse describes the violence it's talked about. The kingdom of heaven suffers or invites violence. What violence? And the violent take it. The violent take it. You get so full of faith that you get violent with your faith. Amen. You get so full of the word, you get violent with your faith. And every day, I take it, I take it, I take it, I take it. Hallelujah. say. That verse doesn't say the kingdom of heaven invites violence and the violent feel it. It's not about what you feel, it's about what you take. Faith takes. Amen. The natural man is waiting to feel something. But if you'll take it, you'll end up feeling. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
glorify you. Hallelujah. All right, everybody put their hands down. If you can already tell a difference, whether I called out your condition or not, but you can tell a difference, something has changed that you can already tell. Raise your hands high. Look at that. Turn around and look how good Jesus is. Turn around. Keep your hand up high. Keep your hand up high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's that easy. It's just that easy. Hallelujah. Now that you saw and you are a part of what, what we did tonight, worshiping and praising and taking with our words of faith. Now you can do it at home, you can do it in your car, you can do it at your place of business, anywhere, without us even being there. Now you see how it operates. Amen. Don't wait to feel something. I love something that my, my, my oldest son says. He said, healing is not a feeling, it's a property. It belongs to you. Many measure their health by their feelings. Measure it by the word. What's been made yours in Christ? Let's sing something. Whatever y'all want to do. Hallelujah, it's mine.
praise behind what about Jehoshaphat's praisers they put the praisers up front you had to be good at praising while you're looking at the enemy while he's showing himself and you see all he's doing and you're good at looking at him and still praising Hallelujah. We're praisers. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's the flow of our daily life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah tells us, put on the yes. garment of Praise. for the spirit of heaviness or depression or something trying to push down on you. Praise it off. Praise it off. Praise it off. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Skillful in this flow. Skillful in this flow. Not just feeling like the flow, but skill in the flow. Hallelujah. You know, I, years ago, there was somebody that was part of our congregation and they were lawyers. And I had gone one day to meet with them and I got to go into the courtroom with them and they were trying a case. And I sat back there and just kind of watched the process. And I go, my goodness, these people are not, not my friends necessarily, but the lawyers, how they can transacted that, that interaction there. I thought they're boring. <laughs> you know, we're used to the Holy ghost and on, on, on what we do. <laughs> and they were just reading off a tablet. This is why we think this da, 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 da. They're pleading the case of their, you know, their client. And with no feeling, a judgment was made. No emotion. They just read it off because it's not about feeling. Yeah, it's about the law. Amen. So it's not about us waiting for a feeling of praise, waiting for a feeling of worship. We can start any old way where we don't feel anything. And before long, before long, it's all going to change. Amen. So as you leave this place tonight, put in place or fortify, if it's already in place, this lifestyle of praise. His praise shall continually be in my mouth because something is continually in your mouth. It might as well be that which gives access to him and gives way to him. Amen. Jesus, we thank you tonight. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify you, we magnify you, we glorify. Father, thank you for your word, how we love thy law. It is our meditation all the day long. Jesus, you're such a wonderful healer. We glorify you. Let's thank you, Lord. Thank you.
just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so what God has for you. Amen. Are you helped tonight? You're blessed tonight? Praise the Lord. We want to remind you 10 a.m. all the way through Thursday morning, all the way through Thursday night, 7 p.m. Is there anything else I need to tell them about? Turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, Jesus is such a wonderful healer to me. And you can be dismissed. God bless you. Thank you.